What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing like a little how-to video, how to jig for brook trout uh, on the ice of course. So we had the aqua view set up so you guys can see uh, the kind of the jigging pattern. Uh, it's kind of explained where I am without showing where I am. So I'm in um, basically five foot of water or less all the way up to shore on either a sandy or like a sand rock transition. Uh, so I got the aqua view set up. Um, you want to be able to see the bottom of your hole. So this is pretty much crystal clear water all the way to the bottom. I'm jigging with a little marabou jig. You can use spoons. Uh, this is white marabou. I tied that myself with just a little, uh, it's not even tungsten, it's just bismuth. Bodies at a Walmart and uh, tie some marabou on there uh, that you can buy at a local fly shop. And it's got amazing action in the water, not amazing action out of the water. So you want to set up, drill a bunch of holes, first light, uh, get set up and then behind me I also have some tip-ups and on those tip-ups I have dead minnows just with a four pound test and an octopus hook probably in that size six I think so I have one there and a couple more there and then I have a jaw jacker that's set up um, closer to shore I'd rather have all jaw jackers but I just don't have all jaw jackers because uh, they gut hook fish less they actually whack them right in the mouth so I'm gonna jig um, you know vary my cadence a lot. If you don't have a camera, it's, you're better off just literally sitting on a bucket and staring down the hole or chilling a couple holes in one spot and making yourself a sight hole as long as it's safe to do so. Look down the hole and basically look for fish. And what will happen is these, these are stocked fish so they kind of stay in the same school. They're gonna basically cruise like missiles uh, down the shoreline, back and forth, back and forth, basically getting food. And so you wanna be there um, when those fish come through. So they'll come through and set a bunch of traps off um, and you can kind of see them if everybody's fishing on the same lake. You'll see them come up behind you, and you know they're they're super hungry. Um, they're chasing perch and minnows and bugs and stuff like that up against the shore for food. Uh, hold on, that's a fish there for a second. So you want to be there when they come through, and be better if you fish with multiple people. That way you can kind of keep them fired up in the area, so the fish will turn and uh, and whack at it. So you want to be there when that school comes through. Oh, here's one right here. He wants it, he wants it, he wants it. Small one. Come on. Super spooky. That was a cool little trout. Come on, get over here. And the guy behind me just caught one, so they're either going that way or they are coming back this way. I'm hoping they're coming back this way. And quick tip, one of the things that I realized with trout is they're super spooky about noise. So that's why I'm like kind of like whispering. Um, but foot traffic, augers, you know, the best thing you can do is get here uh, before legal fishing time. And drill your holes, and then as soon as fishing time starts, drop your lines and start jigging and setting up your traps then, because that way you're not disturbing them when they're feeding in that prime, you know, sunrise time. Uh, here in New Hampshire, it's an hour before sunrise. So I'm looking at the camera, so I'm not looking directly at you guys, at the aqua view. And little tiny schools of perch will come through every once in a while. Like I said, they'll be in school, so they're just going to come through in like a flurry and uh, set everything off at once which is crazy. But set up right on the shoreline, sand or sand rock transition. Um, you could do a weed line a little bit, but I haven't really found them in the weed lines yet. And these are fall stocks brook trout, so they're always big and hungry. Oh. 
Oh, I got fish down there. Multiple fish, multiple fish, multiple fish. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, Brookies, come on. Completely ignoring it. There's like three or four Brookies down there, guys. <laughs> Got snubbed on that one. Not sure why. Come on, eat it. Oh, I missed. Come on. <laughs> oh, I got perch. I got four perch on my screen right now. But. Yeah. Oh, here's a trout. Oh, here they are. Here they are, hold on. Here they are. Here they are, finally guys. Yep, yeah, very exciting. So there's a whole school of trout. He just lassoed himself. Ooh, that was almost a whoops right there. Oh, flag just went off. No, go right ahead. All right, guys, first try of the day. Super exciting. Nice big, uh, nice big guy going back down here. Yeah, big brookie. Hopefully, I get another one right here. Who's hopefully spooling? No, nope, missed him. Oh no, I got him. Yeah. And uh, this guy's was on a dead minnow. Nice big fatty. And the ice hole is pretty much frozen up again. Come on up here. Nice. Another nice brook trout, guys. Waited all day for this. I am. That just made my whole day worth it. All right, I think the uh, fish have finally turned off. I had a couple of probably one-year-old brook trout come through. Uh, they weren't interested in the jig, so I gotta get back home. And um, thank you for watching the How to Jig for Brook Trout. Make sure you guys stay shallow, sandy bottom, and uh, yeah, make sure you guys look down the hole, you know, set up so you can see the bottom or get one of these Aqua View things, which is obviously amazing. And then for the tip ups, four pound test, octopus hooked, uh, size number six. And either dead minnows or live minnows, they don't seem to care. Um, but just be super, super quiet. That is the, the key to doing this. And if you have a bunch of people around you, just keep moving around the shoreline they just kind of cruise the whole shoreline so thanks guys for watching